Welcome back everybody. This is Intrepid Exotics. I'm Tim and today we are going to answer the question, what makes a python a python? I got it the other day in the comments and I thought there's a good opportunity to go into what physical characteristics differentiate between different families of snakes. So we're going to walk away today with a better understanding of how snakes are classified. It's going to help us identify them and help us become more familiar with the animals that we keep. So don't go nowhere. We'll be right back on Intrepid Exotics. Do you have a natural love for animals? Then come along with us as we explore what it's like living with and caring for some of the most unique animals on the planet, our reptiles. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So a couple quick disclaimers before we get into it here. First of all, I'm getting old. I need the reading glasses. So I'm gonna apologize in advance if there's any mirroring up here and I'm gonna be referencing my computer screen because we've got a lot of information to go through. I'm gonna try and hit it just as quickly and as simply as I can. And in addition to that, there's always in anything scientific the more you research the more theories the more ideas you're gonna find and what I'm gonna talk about today is not the only theories but they do seem to be the most prevalent ones and the ones that most of the um, scientific research that I've seen goes with and so there's gonna be outliers anything with nature there's gonna be outliers she loves to throw curveballs so that being said, when we talk about where pythons come from, that kind of backs us up. In order to understand what the differences are between pythons and other snakes, we need to understand a little bit what the difference is between snakes and lizards and other reptiles. And, and an interesting point that most people may not um, think of right off the top of their head you know, if you ask somebody what a snake is, they may say, well, um, snake's a slimy thing that doesn't have legs. Well, actually, there were snakes that had legs, and snakes today have still got remnants of legs. Um, the boas, the pythons, um, Burmese, you know, reticulated pythons and so forth, they've got the uh, vestigial limbs and the pelvic girdle that's remnants of when snakes had legs, because legs are not what classifies a snake as a snake because there's lizards that don't have legs and are classified as lizards. And it's because of their skull structure. As you can see here, this is a, this is a picture of a legless lizard. You may look at it at first glance and say, oh, it's a snake. Well, if you, if you look at the skull of this and you compare it to a snake skull, the skull structure is what differentiates lizards and snakes. As you can see on the lizard skull right here, they've got a single lower mandible and the snake skulls they've got the bifurcated lower jaw so there's actually two lower jaws right there that are attached at the end by a ligament which allows them to move independently and that's one of the main characteristics that's going to differentiate a snake from a lizard so you can have a legless lizard but if it still has a lizard skull then it's still going to be classified as a lizard our snakes have evolved from monitor lizards, Nile monitors, water monitors, and those are believed to have evolved from mosasaurs, which was a uh, aquatic dinosaur that you can see here. And that's about as far as we need to trace the uh, lineage back for this particular conversation. So the skull plays a really integral part in classifying our snakes. Um, it's what distinguishes them from the lizards, and it's what distinguishes different families of snakes from different families of snakes. So it's real easy to get turned around with these taxonomical diagrams and things like that. So we're gonna keep it really simple today. Um, you know, we're gonna keep everything narrowed down. You can see order squamata there, which is snakes and lizards. And we're gonna go down to suborder of serpentis. We're talking about snakes, of course. And I'm gonna focus, there's several more families. But the most common ones that you're going to see are Clubridae, which are Colubrids, Elapidae, which are Elapids, uh, Vipiridae, which are Vipers, 
and Pythonidae's, which are pythons. Um, and there's also Boidae's, which are boas. Uh, those are going to be the main groups that we're talking about. Those are most of the ones that you're going to see in captivity. Um, some of these other families of snakes um, are not something that you're going to see in captivity very frequently. So the simplest way to break down how the families are separated, of course, is by skull structure. And specifically in tooth placement, fang placement, um, and their mobility. So if we're starting with colubrids, uh, you know, notable colubrids, king snakes, corn snakes, hognose snakes, you'll hear the term rear fang used. And here's an example of that. Um, you'll see they have fixed fangs midway or towards the rear of their mouth. And in a lot of cases, you'll see that they have multiple fangs like this one does. Um, and interesting note on colubrids, uh, they may be mildly venomous. There's one notable exception to that that's a pretty dangerous snake and that's the boom slang, which is commonly misconstrued as the, uh, as a green mamba, but those are actually colubrids, uh, rear fang, and they're venomous, they'll, they'll put a hurting on you. So that's one of the few colubrids that'll really do a number on you. Uh, now you're gonna see that in comparison to a lapids, which we know as the cobras, the mambas, things of that nature. And they have fixed fangs as well, which are located at the front of their mouth. So the fang location on a lapids is the same location as your vipers. The only difference is, is that they're fixed fangs. They tend to be shorter, of course, because they can't fold back. And they've got a different structure to them. Some have got the, uh, the holes on the front of the fang facing forward, like with spitting cobras, so that they can actually shoot their venom out. Uh, some have actually got grooves down them for, for delivering the venom. So it's your main difference between colubrids and elapids is colubrids are rear fanged, elapids are front fanged. And what you'll see in vipers is they typically have uh, unusually large front fangs and because of the size of the fangs they've evolved to fold back into the mouth of the animal so that they're not running around looking like a saber-toothed cat snake. So. That clad, that's what classifies your viper. So all of your vipers are going to have folding front fangs. And typically the vipers and elapids are the most notable uh, venomous snakes. Vipers are known for having more hemotoxic venom, whereas elapids are known for having more neurotoxic venom. And that's, that's an entirely different video in and of itself. But essentially a hemotoxic venoms attack the flesh, so you can get rotting decay and things like that, and loss of appendages and whatnot. Whereas uh, neurotoxins, they affect your central nervous system, they affect your heart rate, your diaphragm, things like that. And don't forget guys, if these videos are helping you out, help us out by clicking that subscribe button, get on board. My next benchmark's a uh, thousand subscribers. Looking to get there so that I can start reinvesting all of that back into Intrepid Exotics. And it's going to result in better content, better facilities, better animals. Uh, my ultimate goal here is to start doing this full time. And I would love nothing more than to be able to have a place that I can open up to the public, start doing public education stuff, bringing some, you know, some awesome people in, getting them involved as well. So your support is greatly appreciated. All you got to do is hit that button and keep up with the videos. So going into what makes a python a python, the family of snakes python and boas are two of the oldest families of snakes. And I don't like to use the term least evolved because anybody that's well versed in evolution knows that there's not necessarily lesser or greater evolved. It's not a ladder like you've got a, an achievement to, to reach. It's a tree, so you're going to evolve specifically to the region that you're in. And um, so I wouldn't say that it's necessarily least evolved, but it is the one that has evolved the least. I know it's a play on words. So there's a differentiation to be made between pythons and boas. Um, a lot of that has to do with the locality, and that is 
pythons are what's called old world snakes and boas are new world snakes. Um, and when we talk about new world, um, you can just think Columbus era, North America, South America, Central America. Old world, you're talking Africa, Asia, and Europe, and so forth. So in this picture here, you can see at the end of the ridge rib cage, right before you get to the snake's tail, there's that little horizontal segment of bone, and that's the pelvic, pelvic girdle. The spur on the end of that bone is what's visible in your pythons, and the long segment of that is actually what would be their femur, and then the pelvic girdle um, up the right side of that. So snakes actually do have feet or rather the remnants of feet. And I'm gonna demonstrate that. I'm gonna show you really quick on my Burmese python. He's a really good example of that. He's got really well-defined spurs. And he's an albino, so it shows up really easy. And he's a little hissy this morning, so. Easy does it, buddy. Come on, I just wanna, I just wanna grab your butt. So this right here are vestigial legs. There's these spurs right here. They're actually part of a pelvic girdle. You can see them pretty clearly on him. So there's that feature that distinguishes the pythons and the boas. Plus you'll see the tooth structure here. Pythons and boas don't have fangs. They've got multiple rows of recurved teeth. Um, the pythons have got, you, you see this right here is a reticulated python skull with the two interior layers, or two interior rows of teeth, as well as the normal top and bottom rows. And this monster right here is a uh, emerald tree boa skull. This is easily misconstrued for just having a whole huge mouthful of fangs. Uh, this this constrictor right here has the largest teeth of any constrictor and just an absolute grizzly profile on this skull but it's still the same setup there's no fangs these are all just enlarged rows of teeth and since the emerald tree boa is a green tree pythons and so forth they're arboreal they feed on birds a lot and you know they've just evolved longer teeth in order to get through and penetrate the uh, fluffs of feathers and so forth, uh, which is what gives them that really grisly appearance. And another differentiation is, you know, pythons lay eggs, they need to be incubated and hatched, boas give live birth, um, and, and like I said, there's going to be a lot of different distinctions and so forth, and there's also going to be um, a lot of outliers to specific rules. Um, life is just so diverse it's impossible for us to classify everything specifically and these are hard fast rules that make this fall into this category and it's one thing that's a big draw for people keeping reptiles you know a lot of us you may start just on a whim buying one small snake and and you start to learn more about it and you start to interact with it and then all of a sudden you start seeing this vast diversity of animals that's out there and it's like well I want to I want to get one of these now and you get that and you get it comfortable and, and before you know it you start with one snake now you're sitting there with a collection with 50 different species and, and five different members of each species that you've got and or more and uh, it can it can really easily um, turn into a really large collection really quick so the really quick down and dirty about this is that the main identifying characteristics um, that differentiate snakes from lizards and also from one family of snake to another family is the skull structure. Um, like I said, there's other things that go into it. There's outliers and this is such a huge topic because there's so much diversity that we could go into this for hours and hours. Now this whole video right here is a result of one simple question. So if you've got any questions, anything you'd like to see more of, get down in the comments and let us know. It does two things. Helps us get ideas for new videos and it helps everybody have a better experience and get clarifications on things that they might be a little unsure of, things like that. Just a better experience all the way around when you guys interact. So I will see you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.